So there's, for me, there's kind of two ways to talk about this passage, and I'm focusing on that last, um, that last verse about the cup of water. Most of the uh, times in the past when I've preached on this, and most of the commentaries that I have run across over the years, focus on that idea that even doing the smallest thing in the name of Jesus Christ, we're blessing other people, that it doesn't have to be this grand uh, uh, um, act of devotion or kindness, that all these little things add up and that we need to, to be out there looking for opportunities to do these small things, even a cup of water to other people. I think we do that here in this congregation. Uh, Wednesday night's the perfect example uh, we give not only a cup of water, but a meal to anyone who comes in. And, and I'm so thankful that we do that and that you are part of that. But we also do Meals on Wheels. Now, those of you who have done it, you know when you go to the door and give that meal, the look in people's eyes, the appreciation, you know that that little meal, it's not going to change their lives, but it makes a difference in that moment. All these little things add up. You know the, that story about the starfish. I'll tell it again in case somebody doesn't, but I think you all know the story about the man walking down the beach and, and he starts, uh, the, all these starfish have washed up and he starts throwing them back. And, but there are hundreds of them, maybe thousands of them. And somebody walks up to him and says, you're never going to uh, uh, get all those back in there. You're not going to make any difference. And he picks up one and he throws it in the, back into the ocean. He said, well, it makes a difference to that one. And so that's the uh, idea that we're, we can't fix the world. We can't solve all the world's problems. But we're given opportunity to notice what's in front of us and to give a cup of water. Now, a cup of water may be a hug that somebody needs. It may be a ride somewhere. It may be just a, a little bit of financial assistance. We don't know it's different for each person, but we're told here that when we do that, we will not lose our reward. What an incredible encouragement. What an incredible, powerful thing. We know that Jesus Christ died for the world. We don't have to die for the world, but we are called to listen to Jesus. We're all called to allow Him to be our Lord. We are called to keep our eyes open and serve those who we see. Every little thing adds up. So never, if you ever find yourself saying, well, I, I can't do it. I'm not smart enough. I don't know enough Scripture. I don't know enough about the Bible. I can't get around. There's always these little things you can do. And it may just be for your family in the, in the house in front of you. But we look for that. Now, as I said, normally that's the way I, I, I look at this. And, and the same uh, thing about the cup of water is found in the Gospel of Mark. And, it, and it's meant to be read this way, these little things that we do. This is a little different, I have to be honest with you. Uh, coming at the end of chapter 10 because he's talking to the disciples. And he's telling them basically that anybody that welcomes you will be blessed. In other words, what he's saying is the people who support your ministry, they won't lose their reward. And so when I talked about the first part of this chapter, I talked about how tough it is to be in ministry. All you got to do is Google clergy burnout and you'll get a real good sampling of how tough it is. And so anytime you, this congregation, give me, the pastor, a cup of water, it's a beautiful thing. Now, that cup of water comes in a lot of different ways. Like I said, it can be a hug or, or pastor, can I help you with this particular project? So I talked a little bit about that last week, but I want you to know I'm not the only one doing ministry. All of the elders serving on your session, each one of them, and their names are in the bulletin, they're doing ministry and, they're, and, and they have moments where they are not appreciated and so part of what we have to remember is to notice who our ruling elders are in this moment. See if they need any help. Can I help you with that project? 
Can I help pray for you in this way? Can I give you a cup of water? Because they are in ministry in the same way I am. But it's not just the elders, and you know this well. It's the Sunday school teachers. It's any volunteer that does anything in this church or out in the community. They are the disciples. They're the ones that are being told, if anybody gives you a cup of water, it's like giving me a cup of water. Giving Jesus, not me, a cup of water. So, on one hand, this says go out, keep your eye open for the least of these, and give them a cup of water, a hug, whatever they may need. But on the other hand, it says make sure you notice the missionaries in your midst. Make sure you notice the disciples that are here. Make sure you notice the choir that's working hard to lead worship, the choir director. Make sure you notice the Sunday school teachers, the volunteers, the people planning bushes or flowers out there. Make sure you notice the ministry that's going on here because none of it happens without you. None of it. So look around this week. Find somebody outside in the community, somebody, and give them a literal cup of water or a metaphorical cup of water. But then reflect on what's going on in your church and ask yourself, who's doing the work? Who are our missionaries? Many of them go unseen, and it makes it a little hard to figure out who they are and support them. But you know many of them. You know much of what goes unseen. So find a way to say thank you to them, to those who are doing the work of Jesus Christ for this particular congregation and taking it out into the world. This passage can be interpreted a different way. My invitation is to do both. Amen.